This is a new section. In this section, we're going to learn about routing in ASP.NET Core. In this first lesson, we need to understand endpoints for the purpose of understanding how routing works. First of all, we need to reiterate the concept of routing. When a request comes into a web application, a web application, which typically consists of many endpoints. Now, which endpoint should be used is the question. And that's why we need something that is called routing. Routing is the functionality that maps the request to a endpoint handler so that the endpoint handler can be used to handle the request. That's the concept of routing. Again, routing accept the request and maps that request to one of the endpoint handlers in the web application. So that's the concept of routing. But first of all, in this lesson, we need to understand what is a endpoint and how it works, even how to create it. Because without understanding this part, we don't know how routing would work, right? We don't know how routing can be able to select an endpoint and try to execute it. So let's focus our energy on understanding endpoints in this video. So first of all, what is an endpoint? Here is the definition of an endpoint. An endpoint handles a request and returns a response. So there are two key parts in this definition. First of all, it handles a request. Only by using handling requests to define an endpoint is not enough. Because if we look at our middleware, any of the diagram would work. For example, this one, we have three middlewares in this middleware pipeline. Each one of them potentially can handle the request, right, in a different way. So just use the first part, which handles the request to define a endpoint is not enough. We have to add a second part, which is returning a response, right? So a middleware that handles a request and returns response would be called a endpoint. Returning request indicates that this middleware is a terminal middleware. It prepares the response and because it's terminal middleware, so it returns that response back to the browser. So this two different key points defines the endpoint. It handles a request and it returns a response. Now, what are the types of endpoints in the ASP.NET Core? First of all, of course, you can create your own custom middleware to be a terminal middleware and returns response. In fact, that's what we did when we learned ASP.NET Core middleware pipeline in the previous section. A lot of them are terminal middleware that returns response. And by definition, they are endpoints. However, for a web application, usually it returns HTML. For a web API, it could return JSON or XML. And to manually construct HTML or JSON is a pain. Therefore, we need a framework to help us. And of course, we're learning ASP.NET Core, which is the framework that can help us to return the response, right? So those are the built-in endpoint handling middlewares. And if we look at one of the first diagram here, which is, I believe, here, you can see that we have this rectangle here, which includes all of these things. So this rectangle basically is the rectangle for endpoints. So we have three different built-in way to return response, which means we have three different endpoint handling technology in the ASP.NET Core. We have a VC, which is used to return HTML, as well as Web API. We have Breezer Pages, which is used to return HTML. Then we have Minimal API, and this is usually only for constructing API, which usually returns JSON. Now we have middleware, this is for customize, right? So this is the customized middleware that we as developer can create ourselves to use as a endpoint. So we have these four different options in ASP.NET Core to work as a endpoint. Coming back to over here, we finished defining the endpoint, and we know that we have four different options in ASP.NET Core framework for us to create an endpoint. Then we can try to work on creating endpoints in this lesson. But first of all, we need to understand something else 
It is what I call the identities of endpoints. So let's scroll up. We have, for example, these three different endpoints and the endpoint must be able to identify itself, right? For example, how do I identify myself? If I go to any government agency, they would ask me to show my ID. So I use my ID, for example, driver's license to identify myself. I need to be identifying myself. If I cannot identify myself, the government agency would be thinking, okay, this person, this person could be the same person as I am. They could not distinguish them, right? And then they wouldn't allow me to do anything in the in government agency. Going through the airports, they wouldn't allow me to go through the borders. And in the same way, if endpoints cannot identify themselves, that routing functionality wouldn't be possible because routing needs to know where to map the request. And to do that, first of all, they need to see the differences between the endpoints. So how do we identify endpoints? We actually have talked about that when we talk about the second chapter, which is the HTTP protocol and HTTP context, right? We talked about basic routing, which is a combination between method and the URL. In this chapter, we're, we're going to actually expand on that, but the basic routing technology or the concept is still based on the combination of the HTTP method and the URL. So those two still identifies a endpoint. Now that we know the basic concept of identities and how to identify an endpoint, we can go ahead and try to create endpoints in the ASP.NET Core. Of course, we don't want to use custom middleware anymore. We have finished those in the first few chapters. We need to use one of the built-in ways. And I'm going to choose the minimal API way for teaching purpose because it is the simplest working with SP.NET Core. All right, let's jump into Video Studio and let's try to create a new project. Again, I'm going to choose SP.NET Core empty. So this is the reason project templates. If you don't see them, then you can still follow the same way. Go to ASP.NET Core as a filter, and then make sure you select C Sharp language because otherwise it could be any of the other languages. Then you scroll down, you could see ASP.NET Core empty right here. Select that, right? So for me, I'm going to select this, and then I'm going to select next. And I'm going to call this learn routing. It is also called routing, especially route, I think is how we call it in United States, in Canada, but I personally would like to call it root. That's easier for me to pronounce in a sentence. Okay, so the project, I'm gonna still call it web app because we're creating a web app application. This is just a solution name. So let's click on the next button. Again, over here, we don't need HTTPS. We're gonna add that later. And I'm currently using .NET 9. By the time you are looking at this video, you might be seeing .NET 9 already released or maybe .NET 10. So let's click on create button now, try to create the solution. Okay, let's close this. We don't need it. And let's go to program.cs. We see this one line here. We're gonna talk about this later. For now, let's delete what we need eight in the ASP.NET Core. And the way to do that explicitly is to use app.useEndpoints. This, if you read the explanation here, it says as a endpoint middleware, to the specified basically to the middleware pipeline. So I'm going to use this and then I'm going to delete this automatically generated code over here. And inside here, I'm going to say endpoints.map. Map what? Remember, we just talked about how to identify different type of endpoints. We use the combination of the HTTP method as well as the pass. So here with minimum API type of technology, we have different methods. For example, map get, post, map put, or even patch here, map delete, map, basically almost everything that corresponds to the HTTP method. So let's try to create a endpoint to handle a get request. And then the second part of the identity is the URL. URL is not just hard coded as we talk about in the second chapter when we talk about HTTP protocol. It can be way more complicated, way more flexible than that. But for now in this first lesson, let's still use hard coded 
path. So we're going to say employee just like before. And then we have a handler here. Here are two different signatures. We're going to use the second one for now, which takes a HTTP contact. And then we can say contacts.spans.write async. And we can say get employees. Usually we call it with a way keyword and we add async keyword to enable that. Now you see the green squeaky lines. And if you hover the mouse over it, it says suggest using top level root registration instead of using use endpoints. What does that mean? So we have this method use endpoints for us to help developers to create endpoint handlers. And you can actually create different endpoint handlers inside it, right? So you can say, I create one for get, one for post, right? So here I'm gonna say get employees, I'm gonna say create an employee. Remember the post method is to create a new resource. Right? So under use endpoints, you can create different endpoint handlers, but what it says is that suggests using top level root registration, which means this is not top level root registration. What is top level root registration? Remember that when the project is just created, what you saw is app map get. Remember this? So basically, we have this endpoints map get. You can basically do the same thing over here. See, when I did this, there's no green squeaky line. There is this thing here. It basically just says I have a spelling error employee so gotta change that okay and fix this spelling error too okay so asp.net core suggests you to do this and basically this is equivalent to this when endpoint technology was just created in i think dotnet 3 or asp.net core 3 we have to say use endpoints and then we have to say map get or map post inside this just like this I think since .NET 6, they removed the necessity to use this method. You can just directly use map get, but using it this way is equivalent to this. When, if you just write it like this, eventually the endpoint handlers are still put inside the use endpoints function. This is just an easier way to, to write this. But by doing this, it's not very clear what you're trying to do, right? The intention is not very clear. Therefore, for teaching purpose, I'm still going to write like this. Use endpoints. That makes everything inside very clear. We know that this is an endpoint. This is an endpoint, right? By doing it like this, eventually when you create your own project, I suggest you to do it this way because it's easier. But intention is not very clear. It's not very good for teaching purpose or learning purpose. That's why I'm going to remove this. So we have created two endpoint handlers. One thing I want to emphasize here is that in order to create multiple endpoint handlers, you put endpoint handlers inside the use endpoints function here like this, but do not use multiple use endpoints, right? So don't do something like this. Don't do something like this in order to try to create multiple endpoint handlers. Instead, put this inside use endpoints. So all the endpoint handlers should be inside the use endpoint function here. Okay, so let's create two more. One for put, the other one is for delete. So we have map put and here we're going to say update an employee. We're not actually updating anything. We're not actually creating or getting anything. We're just returning the hard coded string. But this is to demonstrate that you can create different endpoint handlers that maps to different HTTP method. Later, we're going to do actual work. But for now, let's just hard code some string in the response body. So get post put and last but not least, the delete method. I'm going to say delete an employee. And let's give it a try. So what you see is complaints that it's unable to connect to the web server. And if we go to this, so basically, this is the web server that's running. Let's enlarge the fund. And you can see it says the endpoint routing middleware matches endpoints set up by endpoint middleware and so must be added to the request execution pipeline before endpoint middleware. Okay, so basically, these are the endpoint middleware, but we have so many of them. ASP.NET Core doesn't know which endpoint should be executed because we haven't done routing yet. And that's what we are going to talk about 
in the next video. In this video, we have learned all about endpoints. What is endpoint? How to identify endpoints and how to create endpoints. In the next video, we are going to talk about how to root one of these endpoints. That's everything I want to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please let me know. If not, I'll see you in the next one.